In my last video, I showed you all the different ways you can install Home Assistant. I covered some of the pros and cons of different installation methods, and hopefully you're able to settle on one that fits your needs. I chose to set up my Home Assistant using a full install of the Home Assistant OS on Raspberry Pi 5. I feel that this is the best option for starting out if you plan to expand your setup. It provides lots of power and room to grow. In this video, I'll go over the main features of Home Assistant, and we'll learn how to navigate the user interface, learn some terminology, add some integrations and add-ons, add some devices, and set up our first dashboard. This is a lot of information to cover, so I'll set up chapters for easier navigation. My name is Steve, and this is IT Alchemy. In the previous video where I installed the Home Assistant image on a Raspberry Pi, it wasn't just an application that was installed, it was a whole system. The Home Assistant architecture consists of three primary components that sit in what's called a technology stack. This is a fancy way of saying there are multiple sets of technologies connected together to help build the application. The three components in the Home Assistant stack consist of the core, the supervisor, and the operating system. The base component is the operating system. This is a minimal Linux environment that is responsible for interacting with the hardware Home Assistant is installed on. It manages the bootloader and file systems as well as provides a stable environment that allows Home Assistant to run on different machine architectures. The supervisor essentially allows you to manage Home Assistant from Home Assistant itself. It runs the core software, performs updates to it as well as the operating system, and makes backups and restoration possible. It also manages add-on software you may want to run in your environment. The core is the main software you interact with and is actually comprised of four parts. There's an event bus which listens for and fires off events such as when you turn on a light, a state machine which keeps track of the states for things and fires an event for it in the event bus, for example whether the light is on or off, a service registry which listens on the event bus. This allows the code to register service actions such as with a webhook, effectively allowing a cloud service uh, such as Amazon Alexa to interact with and control your local devices. Lastly, there's a timer which simply sends a time changed event every second to the event bus. This is useful for timers and countdowns. There are some other components such as the front end user interface and the new voice assistant pipelines, but I consider those more of subsystems. Since Home Assistant is a complex system, it's important to understand some of the concepts and terminology used in order to fully wrap your head around it and not get too overwhelmed. The first and probably hardest thing to understand is an entity. And no, we're not talking about ghosts in the machine. Entities are typically part of a device, and a good way to think about it is being one specific thing a device can do. This could be a sensor, which returns information about a thing, an actor, which refers to something external that interacts with the system, or a function, which is the actions that the thing itself performs. For example, I added my Samsung as a device and home assistant. While it looks like a simple device, take a look at how many entities there are provided. There's like 80. Each entity contains one single piece of information or state regarding that particular thing. This seems like a lot, but keep in mind that you don't have to interact with any of the entities or even look at them if you don't want to. Being able to see every piece of information about a device and using that information to interact and automate is part of what makes Home Assistant so powerful. That brings us to the next concept, which is devices. Devices, as you can probably guess, are just a group of entities. This can represent an actual physical device, but it doesn't have to be, such as in the case of devices that have more than one primary function. For example, an HVAC unit that does both heating and cooling may be represented as two distinct devices, each with separate entities, rather than a device with all entities combined. Another important concept is integrations. 
Think of an integration like a piece of software that you can plug into your system to allow it to interact with other software. An integration will provide your Home Assistant with some combination of services, devices, or entities to interact with. For example, I have added an integration for Dexcom, which is a device that provides constant glucose monitoring for diabetics. In this case, the integration provides a single device. There's the user account for the service and two entities, glucose value and glucose trend. Certain integrations may have some caveats, such as dependency on the cloud, uh, configuration that cannot be set up in the user interface, or is community created, meaning it's not officially supported by Home Assistant and could break if not maintained. Take a look at the integrations available and keep those in mind when planning out which devices to include in your smart home. There's nothing worse than getting a new device and not being able to integrate it easily. The next concept is automations. Automations are a set of repeatable actions that you can set up to run automatically. This is where you'll probably spend quite a bit of your time designing out which tasks can be automated and how they should run. Automations have three parts. A trigger, which is the event that an automation such as a motion sensor is activated. A condition, which is an optional criteria that may be met before the action can run, such as night, if it's nighttime. An action, which is an interaction with a device, such as turning on a light. Automations are pretty easy to do in Home Assistant. When you create an automation, there's a handy wizard that pops up and walks you through the process. Next up, we have scripts. These are similar to automations in that they're a set of repeatable actions, but they don't have triggers and can only be run manually or when called by an automation. This is useful for doing a common set of actions instead of building out each task in an automation. For example, say you had an automation that set the living room up for movie night. Your automation could individually change the lights to dim down, turn the TV on, set up the surround sound. You could also set up a script to do all of that and simply call the script in your automation, making it much more streamlined. Similar to scripts, we have scenes. Scenes are more geared towards setting up predefined settings on your devices. Think of it as a way to set entities or devices to a particular state. So now that we have all of the technical bits covered, let's dive into Home Assistant and actually do some stuff. The first thing that we'll do is we'll add an integration. For that, navigate to settings and then devices and services. The integrations page shows all of the integrations you have and may have already discovered some automatically during the installation. If you have any devices that were discovered, click on add and follow any steps if prompted. To add a new integration, click on the add integration button in the bottom right corner. In the pop-up browser, integrations are organized alphabetically by brand. Some integrations are singular, and some integrations, like Amazon, have multiple integrations under that brand. I would suggest doing an inventory of the smart devices you have and looking up the integration for those devices. Some integrations are pretty seamless to add. Others uh, are more complicated and have complicated ecosystems that require more steps. I have a limited number of devices in my home network exposed to this Home Assistant instance, so let's go and add one that was detected like this Synology NAS. Now that that's set up, if you select the integration, you can view the details. Each integration will display the devices, services, and entities it provides you, and you can configure those to your liking. You can also view the documentation for the integration and any known issues it may have. If you click on the device or service it provides, you can view that entry's information, including the logbook of what has changed recently with it, and also which automations and scenes and scripts that it's used in. That's pretty much it for integrations, except that I'll add that there's a whole other side to these in the form of community added integrations. These are provided by Home Assistant Community Store, or HACS. It provides an entirely custom set of repositories to provide all kinds of functionality written by the Home Assistant community. It's not hugely complicated to set up, but it does require a few steps, so I'll link the documentation on how to do so in the description. 
now that we have an integration and have some devices and entities, let's create an automation. Navigate to Settings, Automations and Scenes, and click on the Create Automation button. Let's create an automation from scratch. Most automations will function with the logic, when this happens, then do that, which equates to a trigger and an action. So we'll click on Add Trigger. For this example, we'll select when the back porch motion detection is turned on. Then we'll add what we want it to do. I'll say I want it to send a notification to my phone. To do this, I'll select Send Notification via Mobile App and find which device is mine specifically. We'll give it a short message and a title and hit Save. Now, we could wait until something wanders along to trigger the motion detection, or we can manually test it by going to the automations window and hitting the ellipsis and clicking on Run Action. There we go, something's happening on the back porch. This is a very basic automation, but we can do all sorts of things with it. I'll cover more of that in depth on a later video. The last major thing to cover is the dashboard. Once you get everything set up, this is where you'll spend most of your time, if any, controlling your smart home. The dashboard is comprised of a customizable layout of various cards that display information. These cards are groupings of the states of your various entities, but they can also include things like buttons and switches and sliders, and even perform navigation functions. By default, Home Assistant will create an auto-generated dashboard containing pretty much everything. This is useful to get you started, but it's very easy to get an overloaded dashboard depending on the number of devices, entities, and integrations you have in your Home Assistant instance. My recommendation is that for now, you keep your auto-generated dashboard and start a new one. You can do this by going to Settings, Dashboards, and clicking on Add Dashboard. You can start a new one from scratch, and it'll take you, it'll ask you for a title. You'll notice it auto-populates the URL with a dashboard, with dash, and your title. You can change it to anything you like, but it does this so each URL is unique. Additionally, you can select Admin Only, so that only admin users can view the dashboard, as well as show in sidebar, which is on by default. You can deselect this if you want to create hidden dashboards that can only be accessed by the URL, but for now, let's leave it on. Once you have the dashboard created, click on it in the sidebar, and you'll find a blank canvas. Click on the pencil icon up in the right-hand corner and edit it. Editing in the UI is pretty straightforward, but there are a lot of sections that can be edited. At the top, next to the dashboard name, you can edit the dashboard like you could when you created it. Below that, you have Views. Think of Views like tabs in a web browser. Each view is its own page within the dashboard. Similarly, a view can have a subview, which doesn't appear in the View tabs and has a Back button. These are for when you want to have an action on your view that opens up an additional page with extra content. For example, you may want to have a simple card showing the status of the lights in the room, but upon clicking it, it goes to a sub-view and has additional controls. Each view can have a layout as well and will look customized, and you can even control which users can see that view. The last section in the dashboards is within the body, and by default, these are set up into sections. Each section is one or more columns that contain cards. By clicking on the plus icon, you can add cards of your choosing to the layout. Additionally, if you aren't sure what card would best display which entity, by clicking on the Entity tab, you can select whichever entities you like, and Home Assistant will pick a card for you. You can make some pretty decent dashboards with the built-in Home Assistant functionality, but if you really want to make it fancy, I suggest installing the Home Assistant Community Store, Hacks. There are a ton of community-created cards for all sorts of things. You can also review the documentation and edit the YAML code directly and further customize the look and feel of your dashboard, but I'll do a more in-depth video uh, of dashboards later as well. Now that you have a fully functioning Home Assistant installation and have the basic concepts and terminology down, I hope you'll start to see the huge potential that Home Assistant has for running your smart home. The amount of integrations and customization options make it a hugely powerful tool. In some upcoming videos I have planned, we'll do a deep dive on automations and complex logic and really get into building out our dashboards to suit your needs. 
This channel is starting to grow and I'm very excited to do more with this, so please remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Also, take a look at my fourth wall site that I'll link in the description, where right now you can order some IT Alchemy merch and more to come soon. Also, I'd love to hear from you. Feel free to drop a comment on this video and let me know what kind of content you want to see in the future as we gain momentum. Thanks for watching.